السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا وعلى أصحابه المنتجبين الأوفياء الميامين The discussion is about the timed marriage. Some people call it the temporary marriage, which has been mentioned in the Holy Quran and the Hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and members of his household, Ahlul Bayt, the Imams, the successors to the Prophet, and also the companions of the Prophet. This discussion is not about whether it is appropriate or not appropriate or whether it is socially acceptable or unacceptable or whether I like it, it works for me or I don't like it, it works against me. It's not about that. We can have such discussion later on. This discussion is solely about whether it is legitimate or illegitimate, whether it is halal or haram, whether this type of marriage in Islam is permitted or not permitted. So it is solely a fiqhi, juristic discussion from the Qur'an and from the Hadith and the books of Hadith of both sides the followers of Ahlul Bayt and also the followers of the Sahaba and this might take us into few sessions it cannot be covered in one session so my friends in the beginning let me say before I discuss this sensitive subject that marriage in Islam is intended to bring a male and female together to establish a family, to raise children, to find emotional and psychological peace and shelter with each other, with one another. This is why marriage has been introduced and this is why marriage is important in our faith, in our religion, and other religions too. However, there are some exceptions. Timed marriage or temporary marriage is an exception, is not the norm. It should not be promoted as the norm. It should not replace the permanent marriage, establishing a family and raising children. It's like an emergency door. When do you use an emergency door? You use it when the main door when the main door is not working. Then you go to the emergency door. So it is an exception, not a norm. And it works for some people. It might not work for others. In my opinion, it does not work for young people, young men and women, our children because they have they have to establish a family they have to commit themselves to the institution of marriage and family they have to raise children they have to stay together permanently from day one they say we are together permanently but it works for other categories other groups for instance some divorcee some widows or widower some people who do not like, do not have the ability, either they have some social, financial, psychological, whatever, whatever problems they have. And they cannot commit themselves into a permanent relationship. They can't. Or someone wants to be with someone else for reasons not necessarily physical 
gratification, they want to continue their companionship, being friends, being together, traveling together, working together. So there are many scenarios, my friends, many, thousands of scenarios where timed marriage, temporary marriage, the mut'a marriage works perfect. It works for some, it does not work for others. So I would go back and say that this marriage is for special circumstances. It is not, it is not the norm. Someone comes to Imam al-Sadiq and says, I'd like to get this type of marriage. Imam al-Sadiq says to him, and this is in, in the book of Wasa'il al-Shia. Imam al-Sadiq says to him, what do you want to do with this type? This is in fact in, in, uh, in, uh, in Al-Kafi, the book of Kafi. Imam al-Sadiq said to him, what do you want? Why do you want to do this type of marriage? فَقَدْ أَغْنَاكَ اللَّهُ عَنْهَا عَنْ عَلِيَ بْنِ يَقْضِينَ قَالْ سَأَلْتُ أَبَا الْحَسَنْ مُوسَى Imam, the eighth Imam, the eighth Imam, not the sixth Imam, the eighth Imam. Imam, Musa ibn al-Imam, Musa, the seventh Imam, in fact, Imam Musa ibn Ja'far. Imam Musa ibn Ja'far al-Kadhim, alayhi salam, an al-Mut'a. I asked him about temporary marriage. فَقَالَ وَمَا أَنْتَ وَذَاكْ فَقَدْ أَغْنَاكَ اللَّهُ عَنْهَا فَقُلْتْ إِنَّمَا أَرَدْتُ أَنْ أَعْلَمَهَا so sometimes you don't need you don't need to get into these areas but whether it is legitimate or illegitimate definitely it is legitimate it has been a practice by the prophet peace be upon him by rasulullah and we will come to that inshallah we will come to surah at-talaq chapter 65 verse number 3 وَإِذَا أَسَرَّ النَّبِيُّ إِلَىٰ بَعْضِ أَزْوَاجِهِ The interpretation of this verse is that the Prophet confined it in one of his wives about this, that he had a temporary marriage relationship with another lady. And it has been practiced by Imam Ali in the city of Kufa. This means after the death, way many years after the departure of his loyal wife, Fatima to Zahra alayhi salatu was salam. But not everything that has been practiced by the Prophet, it could be, or it should be, or it must be practiced by others. It's halal, but not every halal may be get practiced by all people. The Prophet also had many, many permanent marriages, 12, 13. Permanent marriages, does that mean all the Muslims, as, as some, some argue, that we have to follow the tradition of the Prophet? Maybe it works for you, but it does not, polygamy does not work for others. Maybe it works for certain times, certain societies, certain families, certain people, but it does not work for others. So let's be open-minded. Let's put ta'asub, bigotry, and bias and ignorance aside. When we learn something, we have to learn it with open-mindedness. Open-mindedness, not narrow-mindedness, not bigotry, and not arrogance. And just because something does not work for me or for my wife or for my family, doesn't mean it is illegal. Does not mean it's illegal. It, it does not work for you, but it works for others. So we cannot issue fatwas on behalf of God. Tilka hududullah. We follow God. We follow what He says. If He says this is okay, then you may do it, you may not. You are not coerced, you are not forced to do something that you don't like. Therefore, where is it in the Quran? Let's begin from the most important book, the Holy Quran is our constitution and nothing supersedes this book no sayings no other book no other religious 
injunction can supersede this book. This is our constitution. What does it say in chapter 4, Surah An-Nisa, verse number 24? فَمَا اسْتَمْتَعْتُمْ بِهِ مِنْهُنَّ فَآتُوهُنَّ أُجُورَهُنَّ فَرِيضَةً What is the translation of it? The translation says, And those women, this is not exact, exact translation. Nobody can translate what God says. Nobody on earth except Him. Nobody can uh, put in a sentence what God is saying. But this is something close, close to that meaning. And those women whom you seek contentment, stemtatum, contentment, thereby give unto them their bride wealth. Ujurahun means bride wealth, bride wealth or mahr. Now, my friends, if we look at the book of Tafsir, there is a consensus, consensus among the followers of Ahlul Bayt, Shia Islam, and the followers of the companions and the caliphs, Sunni Islam, that this verse speaks about the timed marriage, the temporary marriage. Let me share with you what Jami' al Bayan. Al-Imam Muhammad ibn Jarir al-Tabari died 310. This man died 310. Okay. He is born in Iran, in Amul, Tabaristan. And he died in Baghdad. And he's called Imam al-Mufassirin. Imam al-Mufassirin. The top, the top notch commentator on the Quran in the Sunni tradition. Nobody is above him. All the rest of the Mufassirin, which could number more than 2,000 commentators on the Quran in the Sunni tradition, they learn from him. In fact, they copy from him, from this man. So he's number one. He's number one in the Sunni tradition. Imam al-Tabari says, when he comes to this verse, <clears throat> and this is what, what chapter? This is, this is volume 4. This is volume 4. The one I have is fo volume 4, Al-Mujallad al rabi And this is verse, uh, this is uh, page number 19. He comes to this, 9034. He says, فَمَا اسْتَمْتَعْتُمْ بِهِ مِنْ هُنَّ and then he adds this clause to it. إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ musamma. He adds this clause to the ayah, to the verse, to the original verse. The verse only says, فَمَا اسْتَمْتَعْتُمْ بِهِ مِنْ هُنَّ فَآتُهُنَّ أُجُورَهُنَّ فَرِيضًا But see here, he says, إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ musamma To a prescribed time, meaning that you mention the time. This time could be one day, it could be one week, it could be one month, it could be one year, it could be one decade, it could be 50 years. It's up to both of you. You decide the time. فَآتُهُنَّ أُجُورَهُنَّ فَرِضًا فَهَاذِهِ الْمُتْعَةِ الْمُتْعَةِ الرَّجُلْ يَنْكِحُ الْمَرْأَ بِشَرْطٍ إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّةٍ A man marries. It's a marriage. It's marriage. It's not zina. It's not fornication. It's not adultery. It's marriage. Legitimate marriage. A man marriages, marries a lady for a specific prescribed time. إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ And then another hadith. 9035 he says فَمَا بِهِ Nikah al the timed marriage. Sa'altu ibn Abbas an Abi Nadra, someone Sahabi by the name of Abu Nadra. Sa'altu ibn Abbas an Mut'at al Nisa, qal ama taqra surat al Nisa. Don't you read what we have in chapter 4, 
the women, Surah An-Nisa, verse number 24. قَالْ قُلْتُ بَلَا I do read. قَالْ فَمَا تَقْرَأُ فِيهَا فَمَا اسْتَمْتَعْتُمْ بِهِ مِنْ هُنَّ إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّةٍ قُلْتُ لَا لَوْ قَرَأْتُهَا هَكَذَا مَا سَأَلْتُكَ قَالَ فَإِنَّهَا كَذَا So Ibn Abbas, the way he read it, not only Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas and Ubay ibn Ka'b. Ubay ibn Ka'b, we've been told that he was commissioned by Abu Bakr during the first days of his reign, the reign of Abu Bakr in power when he succeeded the Prophet. He was commissioned to collect the Quran. So they attribute, the Sunnis attribute the collection of the Quran to Ubay ibn Ka'b. Whereas the Ahlul Bayt theory is that the Prophet was the one who gathered the Quran during his lifetime. And after him, the one who organized the Quran was Imam Ali alayhi salam. So this man, So in this, though the ila ajalim musamma up to prescribed term is not found in the Quran. But they say whenever Ubay ibn Ka'b and Ibn Abbas, according to the Sunnis, Tabari and others, when they would read this verse, Ubay ibn Ka'b and Ibn Abbas, they would add this clause, this sentence. Maybe not as a part of the Quran, but as a part of explanation and commentary on the Quran, but not an addition to the Quran. Are you with me? Pay attention to this. So this is, and then something interesting that Abu Ja'far al-Tabari mentions in his Tafsir Jami'ul Bayan, page 20, volume number 4. He says, سَأَلْتُهُ عَنْ هَذِهِ الْآيَةِ فَمَا اسْتَمْتَعْتُمْ بِهِ مِنْ هُنَّ أَمَنْسُوخَةٌ هِيَ قَالَ لَا Is this verse have been abrogated during the time of the Prophet and removed and cancelled? He said, no. لا. قال الحكم عن الحكم A man by the name of الحكم قال علي رضي الله عنه He narrates on behalf of Imam Ali لو لا أن عمر رضي الله عنه نهى عن المتعة ما زنا إلا شقي If it wasn't for Umar to forbid the timed marriage, then no one would dare to commit fornication and adul adultery except an evil person, an immoral person. So this is in Jami' al-Bayan, Abu Ja'far al-Tabari. We come to the second most important book after him, 300 years after him. Tabari died in 310. Al-Razi, Fakhruddin al-Razi, Muhammad ibn Umar died 606. Again from Iran from the same region of Mazandaran or Tabaristan, but he was born and raised in the city of Ray, which is currently southern Tehran. Again, his tafsir is considered the most comprehensive. This man is very argumentative, and he is very powerful in his argument. Very powerful. So, he also, when he speaks about about the timed marriage, <coughs> he says, "In al murada bi hadi al ayah hukm al mut'a." This verse, chapter four, verse twenty-four. What is meant by it is the marriage of temporary. Now he, this man, considers mut'a. He says mut'a or istimta, though it sounds like enjoyment, gratification, but in reality in the language it means the benefit. The act of getting benefit from something is mut'a. So it doesn't have to be pleasure, doesn't have to be sensual pleasure, it doesn't have to be uh, physical gratification, doesn't have to be sex. Any benefit you get, sometimes mental, sometimes emotional, sometimes psychological benefit, that is called muta. 
So when you hear zawajul mut'a, the mut'a marriage, <laughs> don't go right away to sex. No. Mut'a here means benefit. Whereas others argue with him. Sheikh Ja'far al-Subhani, one of the greatest scholars of Islam, in his book, Al-Insaf fi Masail Dama fi al Khilaf, he says, I'll give you the right answer. He's still contemporary. He's still living. May God prolong his life. Wonderful man. Sheikh Ja'far Subhani, wonderful, intelligent, dedicated servant of Islam. He's originally from Tabriz, Iran, and he recites in Qum. And he has written many books, and all his books are of a great benefit because he is a researcher. He is a allama. He is the most knowledgeable. When he writes something, he does good homework, good research. God knows how many books he has read in his life. So he comes, he says, Mut'a does not mean even enjoyment. إن المراد من الاستمتاع في الآية هو العقد هو العقد. So when God says فما استمتعتم به منهن فما استمتعتم به منهن He means استمتعتم here which is a verb it means when you make a contract with them. So استمتاع here is a contract. The act of the contract is called istimta, even if you don't have relationship. Suppose someone does a contract, marriage contract, with someone else, and he didn't touch her, and he didn't see her after that. He has to give her. Still, he has to give her the bride wealth, the dowry. So, Let's go back to uh, <clears throat> let's go back to Fakhr al Razi, Imam al Fakhr al Razi. He says, وهي عبارة عن أن يستأجر الرجل المرأة بمال معلوم إلى أجل معين فيجامعها واتفق على أنها كانت مباحة في ابتداء الإسلام. روي أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لما قدم مكة في عمرته تزين نساء مكة فشكى أصحاب الرسول طول العزوبة. فقال استمتعوا من هذه النساء. Razi says, temporary marriage means someone marries a man, marries a lady, and he gives her her dowry, her bride wealth. Okay? Up to a certain time, prescribed time, إلى أجل معين. And he says there is a consensus that it was approved and practiced and endorsed in the beginning of Islam. It was halal, it was legal, it was legitimate. And when the Prophet came to Mecca on the eighth year, <coughs> from Medina to Mecca, the conquest of Mecca, Fathu Mecca, the women of Mecca, they wear their ornaments, makeup, could be cosmetic surgeries, I don't know. <coughs> So the companions of the Prophet came and complained to the Prophet. And they said, this is too much for us. We are away from our wives and those women are attractive. Attractive. Faqal, the Prophet said, according to Fakhr Razi, according to this man, by the way, I'm still quoting Sunni sources here. Faqal, istamti'u min hadihin nisa. You can marry. Istamti'u here means you can have a temporary marriage relationship, a timed marriage. Then he says, There is a debate, disagreement among Sunni, among Muslim scholars, whether this type of marriage has been cancelled, abrogated, removed or not. The majority of the Ummah according to him, and means the Sunni of course, the Ummah here means Sunni, Sunni Muslims, they say it has been abrogated. وَقَالَ السَّوَادُ مِنْهُمْ But other group, which is could be minority, إِنَّهَا بَقِيَتْ مُبَاحَةً كَمَا كَانَتْ The temporary marriage is still, still okay, still halal, permissible as it was. Nothing has changed. 
no ruling from God or the Prophet to ban or prohibit this type of marriage. وهذا القول مروي عن ابن عباس وعمران ابن الحسين. And this, the issue of the permissibility of this marriage, has been quoted by Abdullah ibn Abbas, which is considered the, the most important scholar, حبر الأمة, in Sunni Islam and Shia Islam. And Umran ibn al-Husayn, another companion of the Prophet. Both of them are companions. And then wa Umran ibn al-Husayn, the second companion, Umran ibn al-Husayn, فَإِنَّهُ قَالْ نَزَلَتْ آيَةُ الْمُتْعَةِ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ وَلَمْ يَنْزِلْ بَعْدَهَا آيَةٌ تَنْسَخُهَا The verse of the time marriage came down in the book of God as we saw, chapter 4, verse 24. You have to write them down so you don't forget. وَلَمْ يَنْزِلْ بَعْدَهَا آيَةٌ تَنْسَخُهَا There is no ayah that came after it to abrogate it, to cancel it. وَأَمَرَنَا بِهَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ and the Prophet of God وسلم, commanded us to marry temporary marriage. And we did a practice temporary marriage. And the Prophet died while he did not forbid us from practicing the timed marriage or the temporary marriage. Reference to Umar. Another man came after the Prophet. And he said what he liked to say, reference to Umar. This is in this book. This means that the Prophet, according to the Sunnis, did not prohibit the timed marriage. It was during the time of the second caliph. Okay? And then he, he, he speaks about three or four. Again, he says here, احتج بها عمران بن الحسين حيث قال إن الله أنزل في المتعة آية وما نسخها بآية أخرى وأمرنا رسول الله بالمتعة وما نهانا عنها The Prophet never forbid us from practicing متعة ثم قال رجل برأيه ما يشاء يريد أن عمر نهى عنها فخر الرازي says عمران بن الحسين what he meant in his hadith is that it was عمر himself he forbid the timed marriage. I stop here, but I will continue, inshallah, into the second, the third, and the fourth session. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.